simple machine. It's basically a tooth roller that actually pulls the, the skate into a blade. The blade is set for the depth of the skin and it'll just peel it off like uh, you basically peel an apple or an onion. As the teeth grab the, the flesh, it'll actually pull it into that knife. That's actually a razor blade that run, runs across, across here. The tooth roller's pulling it in, so it literally just peels, peels the skin off. If you were to look in the uh, disposal bin from the machine, you could literally open that piece of skate wing skin up and it would be the whole skate wing intact, one piece of skin. A lot of them, still this actually needs some more preparation as a lot of people will actually flay this off as there's a cartilage. There's actually a, a cartilage in, in between. This would be the top fillet. This would actually be the bottom fillet. Uh, here at Lunds, what we do, uh, we uh, just actually purchased this uh, piece of equipment, skate skinner. Uh, we get skates from Barnegat along with their monkfish catch. Uh, this is something new for us. We've uh, been just basically freezing the skate wing whole. We're actually trying to get into skinning them fresh and uh, selling them skin fresh. I'm fortunate enough to be the chef of the month for Viking Village, and I am preparing uh, their skate fish, which is uh, off the boat today out of Viking Village. Uh, basically, skate fish is um, a bottom, uh, bottom fish. Uh, it comes from our Atlantic here, and uh, it's usually gray in color. Uh, it's usually wings that they use. Uh, it's a nice pinkish color, if you can see. Uh, the, the name of the fish uh, from this coast is probably a, a winter skate. There are different, there's several or eight different names for them. Uh, one of the names would be like a, a bondor skate or a clear nose skate. Uh, this one here is going to be a winter skate. Uh, it's, it's a boneless fish. It's from the uh, like the shark family, the ray family. Uh, these guys should grow up to actually, actually 200 pounds. It's, it's amazing how big these do get. Uh, if you go to Asia, I've been to Asia in my past careers, and if you ever go to the fish markets, you'll actually see them, the whole entire fish. If you go to different markets and they just have the wings, you can't identify them from just the wings. You have to really see the whole fish to identify the fish if you're you know, well known with this uh, breed of fish. Okay, so basically uh, the, the skate fish does have cartilage in it. When you do buy the skate, sometimes it, it's uh, pretty clean for you, the skin is off it, and sometimes you know, you'll have a little bit of skin on it. So basically you just grab it and slide your knife over it to get the skin off. You can actually peel it like that. You can get under the fish, take it right off. Now you'll feel it. It looks like it's a bone here, but again, it is all cartilage. So, and then just basically cut it right out. Like the whitest skin in the back, we'll cut that off. You know, you're not hurting it by cutting it off. Okay, great. So what I like to do is like to get the knife under it, and if you go right to that cartilage, it feels like bone, but it really isn't. And we'll just fillet the fish. I'm gonna get a nice piece off of this. And if there is any cartilage left, we'll just clean it off. And it's got a beautiful pink color. Again, when you when you cook this, that pink's gonna turn very white. If you overcook it, what's going to happen is it's going to fall apart. And you don't really want it to fall apart. You want to have it to stay, uh, you know, biteable sizes. So again, I'm going to cook a nice pasta dish today with this. So we'll cut out, like I said, we'll cut out the excess. That you put your hand, you feel it. And anything that feels like a bone, which is really cartilage, we're just going to cut out of there. All right, and turn this this way. And actually, you can actually use this for a stock. You know, why waste it? You know, uh, in China, you know, in Asia, and a lot of, you know, even in America, where a lot of people come from all over the world, everything is usable. So don't throw it away. If you want to make a nice white fish stock out of this, that'd be great. Same with this. I cut that excess off the back. We can just grab it, hold it, put your knife down, and that's great. And come right off, right in nice pieces. Okay. And all I'm going to do is we're going to cut this into bite-sized pieces. You can leave them larger. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get this fish, I'm going to dredge it in flour, meaning uh, most of the fishes I do cook, I get a, uh, a flour and I'll throw, you know, seasoning in it, whatever season you want to use. I like garlic and, you know, onion powder, salt, pepper, maybe a little oregano, but again, whatever you like to use, what's your favorite in the kitchen, use that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my pan really hot and I really love to use olive oil, okay? So I got nice bite-sized pieces, maybe a little bigger, that's fine. Basically what I'm doing is I'm throwing the fish into the flour, it's called dredging. And all you want to do is you just want to lightly, lightly, lightly flour it. All 
Uh, it's, you know, it's probably like scallops. It's called fake scallops in a lot of other countries. And unfortunately, um, what they do is they'll get a, uh, a little like a round disc and they punch out the scallop pieces after they clean it. So, because it does taste a lot like scallop. Um, but you can't really <laughs> confuse this skate fish with scallop, especially in Barney Delight, because we have probably uh, one of the greatest scallops in the country coming right off our coast here. All right, so basically what we're gonna do is we've got a nice hot pan. Gonna add a little bit of olive oil. I prefer olive oil. Again, you can use anything you want. Now with light, I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit because it's a little too hot. And with a little bit of flour, you're just gonna, you know, powder off the flour. You want a very light flour coating. And we're gonna throw some garlic in. Some onion. Get some, I got some nice Spanish onions. I got some uh, beautiful, you see how nice and brown that is? You, what do you want to get? You want to get it to a, a nice color. You don't want to overcook it. You don't want to undercook it. You want to get it to where it's a nice, that's perfect right there. Start to turn nice and brown. It's beautiful. It looks like it's just about there. Nice brown. Onions are nice. All right, and what we're going to do is get a little bit of flour we used, just a little bit of it, and we're going to just call it sand jade. It's a French word. It's like making a roux. So we're just going to get that. We're going to soak up the oil in the pan. And what that's going to do is it's going to make us a nice little sauce. Not burning. What we're going to do is we're going to deglaze this with a little white wine. Doesn't that sound beautiful? Oh, you see, I put a little white wine in there. And there's still a little bit of the, you know, cooked parts in there. So you know what? You put a little more white wine if you like. It's no big deal. Okay. And you'll see that if you work that, it comes right off. And that's really, that's the caramelization. It's really beautiful. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a lemon. A little lemon juice in there. Okay, so you see how nice it is now? I got it off the heat, I put a little white wine, and I hit lemon juice. So basically what you want to do now is you want to add uh, some kind of a stock, whether it be fish stock, uh, chicken broth, whatever you want to use. You can even use uh, pasta water, believe it or not. Uh, a lot of times what you do is you cook the pasta, the pasta is, you know, pasta being reheated, because what I did is I cooked my pasta already, and now I'm going to use the pot to reheat my pasta in. And it's got you know, the starches in there, it's got olive oil, it's got, you know, the taste of the pasta. Now basically I'm just gonna get a little bit of the uh, sun-dried or stewed tomatoes. Not too much, just enough to give it a little color. Okay, I'm gonna get some artichoke hearts. Just a few, if you don't wanna overdo it. Guatemala olives, I love Guatemala olives. Again, use whatever you want, that's what I had in the house. All right, some beautiful basil. All right, that's beautiful. Again, like I said, you can use either water, you can use whatever you want. You can use water from the sink, it doesn't matter, whatever you wanna use. I'm gonna use a little, uh, for instance, well, actually, for the rest of those chicken stocks, just a little bit. And now remember, I put that uh, flour in there. So now as we cook it, the sauce is going to get really nice now. It's going to get thickened up on its own from the Sanjay method, which was adding the flour to the oil before we put any kind of liquid in there. And that's going to make its own roux. So basically, it's cooking out the flour. You just want to give it a little taste at this point. Oh, that's good. And you know what? It's got enough salt in there. They add a little pepper to it. You know, raisin fresh pepper. Uh, Fresh pepper will last forever. It doesn't go stale until it actually breaks open. So I, I definitely recommend it. You can turn the top and get different uh, varieties, different uh, sizes of the crush of the pepper. Okay, and at that point, I put a little more pepper in there. And you know, my downfall is any kind of Romano cheese, pecorino, um, you know, I love cheese. So I'm just gonna put a little bit and finish it. As well as put some of my pasta as well. You know, at this point too, you wanna put more lemon, put more lemon, you know I mean? It doesn't hurt. Of the chunks, isn't that beautiful? And it's got a little bit of the red from the uh, stewed tomatoes. And you got your little bit of green from the basil, katamara olives. All right, and now you see how that's getting nice and thick? Look at that. It's going on that pay. You, know, you rip it off, you see how it's not really dripping off the back of that spoon? It's really nice, and that's, that's the quality of sauce you want. You know, where it's not dripping, you don't want it too loose, and you don't want it too thick. And that's ready to serve. So, all right, now I'm just getting my pasta bowl. Basically, uh, Again, use whatever you want to use. Now, I pre-cooked my pasta before we uh, started this. So I'm gonna get, again, a nice pound of, pound of pasta. Enough the way you want, okay? By putting it in my strainer, give me it back in my water. Again, it was al dente, meaning that it uh, firm to the bite. So basically, I'm gonna get it. That's hot enough because that water's boiling. All right, I'm gonna add it to my sauce, then my fish. I'm gonna get a little bit more of my cheese, okay? 
And there you go. And that is skate over pasta. Ricotta mild olives and some stewed tomatoes and artichoke hearts with a little bit of garlic and red and white onion. And I'll tell you, that's really beautiful. It's set for a king. You know, a dish like this in a you know, restaurant would be $21.95, $25.95, depending on where you go. But you know, cooking at home, you're gonna really enjoy it because it came from our heart, my heart. Happy holidays, thank you Viking Lord for having me. And uh, I think Dave's gonna enjoy this dish with me. Thank you very much. Was so